Joining us now is Oji Okpe with stories trending around the world today. Hey, Oji. Good morning. Good morning, Hello, Lila. How are you? Good. Good, good morning, Dr. Bati. I love your tie. No <laughs> high fives. I'm just complimenting. Yeah, I wonder. You have some Yes, I love no, it. We should thank the uh, <laughs> managing director for this time. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I love the flamingo. <laughs> Thank Good you. morning, Tindu. You both looked stunning this morning with the Thank news you. headlines. We missed you. And you look much. great too, of course, as oh, always. As Thank always. you. Oh, well, Jinica. <laughs> this guy talks a lot more than my name. <laughs> Good morning to you, viewers. We begin what's trending today on a rather sad note. Bola Tiger, wife to a medical doctor who donated a police station in Kaduna to help curb insurgency in the state, lost her life to the exact calamity her husband was trying to avert. Bola was killed by kidnappers a week after she and her two children were abducted from their residence at Chicken local government area of Kaduna. The kidnappers had reportedly demanded a 150 million naira ransom, but when the family could not meet the request, they killed Bola and subsequently demanded 20 million naira for the release of her children. Now a community called Women for Women has shed some light to the story by sharing her story on social media to raise awareness to the tragedy. I mean, this was it's really it's horrible. It's I mean, basically, the police station, they said, was the police station her, uh, her husband donated to the community was 50 meters away from, you know, their residence where the kidnappers came to um, kidnap her. I mean, they were shooting, and it took them a long time to even get into that um, residence before they kidnapped her and her two children. It's, it's so such tragic. a tragic story. And it just also um, calls to mind to that community to really see how even just communication, because, I mean, if you have a police station just 50 meters from where that um, um, situation was happening and nothing um, there was no rescue at that point. It just, it just shows that there needs to be a lot, that a lot needs to be done in that community. Well, in other so words, the abduction yes. of uh, Mrs. Ataga and her two children was preventable. Right. And the, uh, it's so uh, sad, tragic, yes. that in fact, her husband had donated a police station, as you have pointed out, to the community. Right. And the question that that uh, poses, that it raises, is, you know, would other people be encouraged in the future? To support the police. We have community police relations, uh, you know, societies in different places, and people are encouraged to support the police. So you ask the question, could it be that after donating the police station, this hoodlum said, oh, you, you want to encourage yeah. the police, you want to support the police, okay, right. we will teach you a lesson. So these are the kind of questions that will come to mind, and it may discourage people in the future for well, supporting the police. Well, it shouldn't. Secondly, so you know, yeah. she was killed. Um, again, the police, the security agencies could not rescue her. But they still have her two children, and they are asking for a ransom of 20 million naira, the uh, kidnappers. I don't know. I mean, whatever needs to be done should be Must done be. to rescue those two children, to make sure that they are not murdered the way their mo uh, mother has been uh, murdered. And we commiserate with uh, Dr. Philip Ataga, who right. clearly is a very good citizen he, and who takes his citizenship it. responsibly right. and has now been rewarded in this kind of uh, tragic and unkind, cruel manner. It's, a, it's really, honestly really so tragic. There are no words in a situation like this. You know, when you don't know what's right or wrong anymore, you try and help and then there are repercussions for that. It's, it's so sad to live in a society where that is the reality. Well, may, may her soul rest in peace. Still in Nigeria, the chief executive officer of the popular ride-hailing firm Gokada, Fahim Saleh, has opened up on the Okada ban by the Lagos state government. Speaking for the first time since the ban took effect on Saturday, Fahim took to Twitter to share a video about his firm, which he says was not just a business to him, but a mission. It's tough for an entrepreneur who's trying to innovate, who's investing his own money, when this is not my country, it's, it's a country that I, I feel has amazing potential and has amazing people. And they just need the opportunity to shine. And the drivers that were at Gokata, every one of them wasn't there because they just wanted to make money. They were there because they had families. They had children, they had dreams. They wanted to start businesses. They wanted to go to school. They had degrees already but they couldn't find jobs. For many, Gokata wasn't the final place
for their lives. It was a stepping stone to get to that next endeavor. And we were hoping that a lot of these drivers wouldn't be drivers forever. We were hoping that we could place them in higher jobs within Gokata and create a, a, a beautiful community which was developing slowly and 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 it, it, it was it was really something that moved me to the point where I was okay putting all my money and all my effort in. What I'll tell you is that Gokata is not just a business to me. It's a mission. And every part of that mission was always being safe, providing jobs. We had, we do things that nobody else did in the market at the time. We provided helmets that were DOT certified, Department of Transportation certified, U.S. Department of Transportation certified, which means that if you get in a motorcycle accident with that helmet, that you are protected. We put Bluetooths on our helmets so drivers did not use their phones while they're on their motorcycles so they could get directions through their Bluetooth headsets. We provided drivers with these high-end bikes that were 200 cc's and we maintained the bikes because the bike that is not well maintained could and is more likely to get in an accident. We trained our drivers extensively and we monitored drivers through technology, as I said earlier, to understand which ones were the bad ones and eliminate them immediately. All this resulted in an accident rate that was well below 0.1%. Well below 0.1%. While still on the ban of motorcycles and tricycles, some Lagosians have taken to social media to express their frustration with the ban. Twitter user Joe Abba wrote, with the Lagos Okada ban, we appear as usual to have gone for the option that involved at least the least thought and planning from a public policy perspective. If you are introducing 65 buses and 14 new ferries from tomorrow, introduce them first and watch it work before announcing a ban. Another user, Jetro Jerry, posted a video showing kids riding to school on the back of a open truck, tweeting, these kids have enough to deal within the horrible educational system we run in this country. Yet the government put them through these horrific conditions to get to school. How did it get to this bad? This is dangerous for these kids. Hashtag for a greater Lagos. As Lagosians have resorted to find an alternative means of transportation, users on social media <laughs> invented different names for the transportation. One user, Aye Mojuba, tweeted the O Horse app, now available on Google Store for Echo Hotel to Aja 3000 Naira, hashtag 3000 Naira. I mean, this is the O Horse, o Horse app. And then the last one, another trending app which is the trekking app called Otrek. User Tommy K posted trekking from Unilag to Surulere seemed very impossible until the invention of Otrek. Use Otrek today, PS, free checks for, you know, to I any location some, in Lagos. Yes, on the streets social media. Of, uh, you know, you call you this morning. Yeah. And if I had known this earlier, you would I have would used have it today. To ask, uh, <laughs> you know, to take a horse ride. <laughs> You know, so that uh, I could beat uh, traffic. And yes. the horse was in any case, yes. you yeah. shown, yesterday. It was you've shown this video yeah. from uh, from uh, Fahim. Horse, yes. That's his name yes. for, of Gokada. But there's also another gentleman who has also been saying similar things. Uh, his name is, I think, Aditai Obamiduro. Mm -hmm. He's the uh, CEO of also uh, another Okada company called uh, Gomax. And his point is that the Lagos State government has failed to make a distinction between former operators and informal operators. And he said that his own company invested as much as five billion naira in this Okada business. And yet, this is where they are. The company has just been shut down. Secondly, the law, the uh, traffic enforcement law, says that there will be no restriction on uh, uh, motorcycles of a capacity of 200 cc. Yeah, dispatch. Yes, you know, so would these uh, Okada uh, companies, the former ones, can they possibly go to court and test the law? Then finally, I think on the basis of all these reactions, the Lagos state government should see the need, yes. you know, to review they what it to. has done. Yeah, and yes. in October 2019, I mean, this same governor, 
you know, Governor Sonwulu had said he was not going to ban Okada. He said he would regulate he it. He even endorsed yes. the go Kada app. Because yes. I mm -hmm. saw a picture of him with the go Kada app. There was a, as well. a yeah. license fee, right. a yearly mm -hmm. license fee, and yes. now this. Mm -hmm. I think that this video that Fahim has shared is so important. It's and everyone, powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Not by 1%, by right. zero deaths. And Honestly, he says that speaking, he also went on to say that he has records to show the yeah. government if they want mm -hmm. to see he how He went as far as explaining the helmets. Thank you very much, Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. Yes. They should push the case further.